This is Duke University. So Turkey has one of the higher rates of imprisoning journalists in the world. Um, you know, when you're occupying the same statistics as Iran and China, this is not necessarily the yeah. company that many uh, folks who aspire towards liberal forms of democracy would, would like to keep. Where do you feel that tension becoming most apparent? What are the issues that as an intellectual and as a journalist mm -hmm. you find yourself having to be most careful mm -hmm. about um, out mm -hmm. of this uh, political pressure mm -hmm. that is either coming from outside or even internalized mm -hmm. by, mm -hmm. by writers? Well, first of all, on that issue of uh, journalists in prison, I should say that Turkey's media freedom scene is bad, but that number actually which went down significantly in the past few years doesn't explain everything. When you look, oh, mm -hmm. Turkey is like North Korea in terms of people in jail and uh, when they're journalists. There was a specific law, uh, anti-terrorism law, which stated terrorist propaganda is a crime. And the people who had sympathetic views regarding the PKK, the Kurdish guerrilla army, uh, were getting into jail because of their sympathetic pieces for the PKK. That was the main reason when Turkey had some 80 p journalists in jail uh, at, at some point. But actually, uh, in the face of criticisms, the government from the EU as well, the government changed that law and actually the number of journalists in jail are very low right now, not in the 70s, sure. uh, not in 70, 80 or 90, something like that. There are a few people though, and they should be out for sure. Um, but the main problem in terms of media freedom in Turkey lately is not that you can go into jail if you criticize the president, but you can lose your job. Yeah. And there are mechanisms that is, that is uh, creating that, which is the government has hu huge economic leverage. And if you're a media boss, you are very, uh, you are very prone to be you know, manipulated by the government because the government tells you, why do you employ these people who are unpatriotic, which means they criticize the government. Uh, and because you fear about some economic implications of that, you say, well, we should not maybe hire these people anymore. And hundreds of people, mm -hmm. columnists, opinion people, all very critical of Erdogan mainly, lost their jobs in TVs, in, 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 in radio, in, 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 the, in the newspapers. I mean, it's not that they're in jail or they can write in a blog, but they, they are forced to become more, mar to get more marginal. And the government has done that. It's a shame that they've done this. They know they've done this. Sometimes they deny, but it's so obvious. Actually, they don't even deny that. Because Erdogan sometimes says that, I mean, why do you allow these unpatriotic, right. these treacherous people to write in your newspapers to media bosses on TV? He says that. Democracy does not evolve very easily. And it took the West, the Western civilization, in particular Europe, many centuries and decades of horrible mistakes to mature. So they should understand that other societies are maybe having similar experiences. And the question of how successful is U.S.'s <laughs> own democratic that, experiment, yeah, for sure. that's another session uh, that yeah, we we'll to have. I, I, you know the right. question better than yeah. me, but no society is perfect, plus even the democratic experience sure. really it takes a lot of wrong sure. steps to, uh, to mature, and sometimes even you still need constant work to mature sure. in certain areas. Um, as we're kind of uh, wrapping up here, would you, uh, for an English-speaking audience, one of the advantages that we have today is obviously much greater access to a broader range of thinkers and journalists and intellectuals. Do you have two or three suggestions about um, internet resources, mm -hmm. uh, blogs, columns that you think for folks mm -hmm. who want to stay up to date in terms of Turkish politics that mm -hmm. they should be following? Uh, well, if they want to follow, they could follow the paper that I'm writing for, Hurriyet Daily News, which is a good source of daily uh, in, uh, news uh, and, and some commentary from Turkey. They can follow Al Monitor. Uh, the, I also write a piece there, which is the uh, Pulse of the Middle East, but it has a Turkey section. And there some informed writers of Turkey, I think, are writing there. If they want to get the pro-AKP point of view, solidly pro-AKP, they can follow Daily Sabah. Okay. Uh, if they want to get the view from seen from the Gulen movement, which is another political, cultural, but also quasi-political actor in Turkey, they can follow today's Zaman. Uh, 